I'm Mike, and today, cheese. We are gonna look at why people can't seem to give it up even when they want to, really asking the question, is it addictive? We're gonna take a look at some research on some interesting compounds that might be the culprit in cheese, as well as some studies on food addiction, and hopefully find some answers. One of the most common answers I get when people find out that I'm vegan is that they could never give up cheese, and that's why they could never be vegan, and then they presume to go on and on about how they're addicted to cheese, yes. And when people first go vegan, they seem to have no problem dropping milk and meat and eggs, but cheese is a different story. And there are plenty of reasons why you might wanna give up cheese. Lightning round, dairy is the main source of saturated fat, at least in the US diet. With cheese as the single highest source, dairy has naturally occurring mammalian hormones. It has been scientifically demonstrated to raise your blood levels of estrogen and lower your levels of testosterone. Cows and calves are treated horribly in the dairy industry and the environmental impacts of animal agriculture are huge. But this isn't a video about why you shouldn't eat cheese that deserves its own video. This is a video about why people who are trying to give up cheese have such a hard time. It's like cheese plates are just staring back at everybody being like, don't think about the baby animals, get your fix, eat me. And Dr. Neil Bernard just came out with a book on this subject about a month ago called The Cheese Trap. In it, he says, quote, loaded with calories high in sodium, packing more cholesterol than steak and sprinkled with hormones. If cheese weren't any worse, it would be Vaseline. And that some foods are fattening, others are addictive. Cheese is both fattening and addictive. Going on to call it dairy crack. It looks like the vegan police is in need of a narcotics division. And in the US, we sure do love our cheese. Due to lowering prices from factory farming over the last 40 years, according to the USDA, US citizens have nearly quadrupled their cheese consumption since 1970s from about nine pounds each to over 35 pounds each in 2015. So what is it about this coagulated, gooey, off-white or yellow, stretchy, amorphous blob stuff that people like so much? These are all qualities that people normally don't seek out in food. The first First, most interesting possible reason that you might not be able to give up cheese is opiates or casomorphins. Not queso like a quesadilla, queso like casein. This is because it is casein, which is broken down into casomorphin during digestion. And when I say opiates, yes, I mean opiate like opium and casomorphin like morphine. We are talking about a family of highly addictive substances here, though casomorphine is not as potent. And it's important to note that our opiate receptors regulate things like pain killing, sedation, euphoria, dysphoria, appetite, and eating behavior. And many scientists believe that the opiate potential of casein is there by design to keep the baby calf coming back for more milk and also to increase the bond between mother and child. Because cheese production does a bit of digestion, you can find casomorphin itself in cheese, but you can also find it in the small intestines of people that just ate dairy. But what might be the most shocking part is that casomorphins have been demonstrated to change the behavior of animals. From this review, many studies have shown that injecting casomorphin had a pain-killing effect or even delayed learning in mice, and one of the studies even found that it, quote, stimulated food intake of high-fat meal, which is very relevant to eating cheese. And another study found that higher doses can even cause amnesia. What? <gasps> I don't even remember eating any cheese. Do you remember eating any cheese, man? I don't even remember my name, dude. <sighs> yes, those studies did go straight to the hard stuff and directly inject casomorphin. And as the review points out, they haven't actually measured casomorphin levels in digestion in real humans yet. But this study actually looked at the casomorphin content of dairy after being put through simulated human digestion. And not like a computer simulation, they put them in little sort of bioreactors that are similar to the human digestive environment and then measured the levels of casomorphin. As you may have guessed, cheese was the highest. Going back to Neil Bernard's book, he says that cheese has seven times as much protein as milk simply because it's concentrated and about 80% of that protein is casein which is then broken down into casomorphin. They found that, quote, beta casomorphin 7 formed in all dairy samples or increased up to 21.77 milligrams per kilogram in digests of cheeses. 
In particular, they're talking about the winner, Gouda cheese, which was over 20 milligrams per kilogram, which is about 10 milligrams per pound. So I decided to do some math. From the previous review, we know that the power of casomorphin is about 5% that of straight morphine. Making the 10 milligrams of casomorphin in one pound of Gouda roughly equivalent to 0.5 milligrams of oral morphine. For comparison, as this study mentions, five milligrams of oral morphine is an actual low dose of therapeutic morphine. So one pound of Gouda cheese is about 10% of a low dose of morphine. And it's important to note that they did not look at all the casomorphines here. They did not look at casomorphine four or casomorphine eight, which has been shown to be a painkiller in mice. So it could be even higher. Now, a medium pizza, which I could personally eat myself, usually has about half a pound of cheese on it, which in the US is usually mozzarella, which is right about the same level of protein or casein as Gouda, though it was not in the study. A deep dish Giordano's pizza weighs three pounds, just saying. It's America. So in a sense, eating a meal of pizza could be like breaking off a little chunk of a morphine pill and taking it. Then when you realize that people have demonstrated effective treatment while microdosing morphine, it's not that far-fetched to think that this opiate effect could maybe steer you a little bit towards the cheese bar. Some have even suggested that the final ingredient required to make vegan cheese as desirable as cow cheese would be to add casomorphins. That until that happens, people just won't be satisfied, but this is unethical for a few reasons, one of which is how casomorphins might kill babies, maybe. It has been linked to sudden infant death syndrome, and it might be the fact that this opiate system is connected to breathing. One study found that children who died of sudden infant death syndrome had three times of the levels of casomorphins in their blood. And for those who might be doubting it, this in itself is enough to show that casomorphines are absorbed from digestion. Casomorphins might also play a role in autism and they may also oxidize LDL or bad cholesterol, which quote, is considered as a key factor in the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis and cardiovascular disease. But casomorphins aside, there is one property of cheese that we do know to be addictive, and that is its fat content. This study in rats demonstrated that high fat foods created addicting eating patterns. High fat foods in many cases can be addicting. I don't think that's controversial. So how do some foods stack up? Apple, 3% fat. Whole wheat, 6% fat. French fries, 40 to 50% fat. Cheddar cheese, America's favorite, nearly 75% fat. I personally did not realize that cheese was that high fat or that calorie dense back when I ate it. Okay, so let's look at some food addiction research starting with this study. These scientists did a couple of surveys to see how addictive certain foods were based off their association with addictive eating patterns. They did two surveys, one of which was about 400 people in that study. They found that pizza was the number one most addicting food, but wait, cheese is further down on the list about 10. Many attributed this to how cheese is not addictive, but in a sense this does fit in with the casomorphin theory because you need to eat as much cheese as you eat when you eat pizza in order to have the effect. You can't just eat a cube of cheese. But in defense of cheese not being addictive, the head scientist Ashley Gearhart said, quote, Liking is not the same as addiction. We like a lot of things. I like hip hop music and sunshine and my wiener dog, but I'm not addicted to her. I eat cheese every day. That doesn't mean you're addicted or it has addictive potential. So clearly she is addicted to cheese and is in denial, but she is probably right when she says, quote, cheese on its own is not particularly problematic. Yes, but removing cheese entirely from your diet is clearly particularly problematic for some people. To be fair, that's not exactly what they study here. They looked at which foods broke away from the pack in terms of addiction in daily life. But in a sense, cheese actually did break away from the pack. She didn't mention that cheese was actually the number one most addictive or problematic single ingredient food. Other foods were combinations of high 
highly refined products. When you combine that fact with, again, how cheese was a key ingredient in the most addictive or problematic food, I don't think the scientists are correct to say that cheese is not the culprit. Clearly, all signs point to cheese. It's also worth noting that 7 out of the 10 most problematic foods usually contain dairy. But out of the 10 least addictive or problematic foods, none of them had dairy. Which brings me to one final reason, which is more logistic as to why it's hard to give up cheese, and that is just how it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. It's often in processed foods, sprinkled on everything, etc. And this is really obvious. It doesn't need further explanation, but it was worth mentioning. In the end, we don't yet have unequivocal proof that casomorphines affect or don't affect the behavior of humans, but we do have an animal model that shows how it affects mammalian behavior. We can measure it in the human digestive system and we can measure it increasing into high amounts in simulated human digestion. And we can see that it crosses digestive barriers and dishes like pizza can create enough casomorphin to compare to a low dose of actual therapeutic morphine. And also how the high fat content can be addictive and maybe these two things work together to make it extra addictive who can say for sure? And one final point, I could see how the idea that cheese could be addictive could be used as a sort of fatalistic excuse to not give up cheese. But you can do it. I have a friend who thought that she could never go from vegetarian to vegan. She considered herself the queso queen, but she did it and she cured some ailments, lost some weight, and is doing great. All right, that's it for the cheese portion of this video, but I do have a public service announcement. Many of you tried to sign up for plantspace.org after my last video but never got a registration email. According to my web hosting service, the site was attacked by spam bots, possibly from putting the link on my YouTube video, and that totally screwed up the email traffic. We now have a new email service, and we have a button on our site that you can press a big orange button that should fix the problem. It has been working for people, so I really, really hope that it works for everybody. Other developments, because of your suggestions, I have added a donate button on the bottom of the homepage. And we have also made the site officially secure. Thanks, Mark, from PB Vibes again for that. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe. And keep an eye out for my next video. That is when I will see you next. Goodbye. Goodbye.